very much. Awesome. Yeah, so hello everyone. Good day. Um, let's know where you're joining. My name is Agama Jisobu and I'm joining from Nigeria. Uh, like Frank has said, I'm the founder of Moms Who Code and I'm um, really excited to have you all here today. I guess we'll wait a couple of minutes for others to join before we proceed, right? Yes, we'll wait. Thank um, you. All right. Um, I think we can start. I think we can start. It's about um, 2.05. So we can start now. All right. So you do the introduction once again, and uh, then I'll pick it up from there. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so hello everyone, good day to you. Uh, my name is Agama Jisoo, and I am the founder of uh, Mom Who Code. Um, we are a community for women who are trying to learn how to code. Um, also, we do have uh, a community for women in general, um, which cuts across different tech areas. Uh, so if you're a woman and you're looking to join the tech community, we're uh, very, uh, you're very welcome to join us. We have a group on Facebook. I'll be sharing the link later on, and then I'll also be sharing the link for Mom Who Code. And so we have uh, today we have uh, Godwin Franks here. Godwin Franks is uh, our facilitator for today's uh, event. He's a project lead at Danera. Danera is a STEM education focus uh, organization, and it's their goal at Danera to ensure every African child have access to the best STEM tool. Their current campaign is leveraging the deep learning AI platform to help young Africans to understand the basic of artificial intelligence. And I think part of the mission is why we're here today. So thank you very much, Francis, for uh, joining the area that everyone here will have an amazing time uh, learning about today's subject. So, all right. Thank you. Um, did we lose her or she signed out? Okay, great. So as she said, my name is Godwin, Godwin Franz, and um, I'll be facilitating the session today. So hope you have a nice time. Um, my, my, my presentation is supposed to last for like two hours because I usually break it down into two. So the introductory part where I just show the slides and the practical aspect as well where I show you how to use the tools itself. So for sake of time, I don't know, maybe we can break it into two sessions and we can have another session maybe next week because we, I don't want us to go beyond um, one hour. Unfortunately as well, we I'm using the free version of Zoom because I couldn't get access to the premium version from Deep Learning AI. It seems like there's a bit of issue there, so we'll have to rely on the on the on the free version, which means that in about thirty minutes it's going to go off, and you have to use the same link to rejoin the session. That will be a little bit of inconveniences or uh, inconvenience. Um, I, I certainly apologize for that. Hopefully next time I'll have access to the to the to the full version of Zoom. So let me share my screen right now, and we jump right into it. So. Please, can you see my screen? Gonzalo, thank you, Apia, Albert Apia. All right, I want to believe you're from Ghana. Yeah, I'm also in Ghana. Yeah, I'm streaming from Accra. So Mom So Code is a Nigerian-based um, organization. So we're expecting a lot of Nigerians, but we also have a lot of um, it's diverse community, um, people from different, all over the place, United States, India, and Asia. You're all once again welcome. Um, so this is our outline. I'm going to try to move it as fast as possible. So if you have questions, you can stop me, interrupt me along the way. And um, I'll try to answer your questions as we move on. So I try to make it very interactive. And um, so this is our outline today. I hope we're going to be able to cover it. Great. So, right. So who has seen this picture before? Um, you can react, or you can comment. Where's my sidebar? You can unmute yourself and speak. Um, trying to make this as interactive as possible. Who has seen this picture before? 
I might have to exit. I can't see the comments. Yeah, I can see the comments now. Anyone wants to share if they've seen this picture before? This picture came out about, um, I think, two or three months ago. Can someone respond? You've seen this picture before? Yes, no. Albert Apia, you want to answer that? Since I can only see you. Have you seen this picture before? You can kindly unmute yourself and, and answer. I just want to get a feedback. Or oh, class B. Class B, have you seen this picture? Yeah, Albert. Mr. Albert. Yes, I've not seen it. This is my first time I've seen it. <laughs> okay. What's your impression of the picture? Uh, what do you think about it? I know. Well, I, 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 I it's an image of the, the Catholic Pope. Okay. But I don't know the, the story behind it. Oh, you think it, you, so do you think it's a story behind it? All right, I'll keep that in mystery for now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Class B. Yeah, okay. So if, if, I, if I can see you, I, I might be able to call you. Um, anyone else want to give it a try? You can comment in the section box and um, in the comment box, or you can just unmute or ask for the microphone and answer the question. All right. Since we're not getting anyone else. All right. Um, so Albert, this is the story behind this picture. This picture you are seeing is not real. It's an AI generated image of the Pope. Probably his face, the, his face is the only thing that is real in the picture, but um, his winter jacket or whatever it's called is not real. It was generated by uh, Mid Journey. Mid Journey is an AI platform where you can generate all manner of images that you like from um, hyper-realistic images to animated images you can, you can generate it. So because of this particular um, scandal, this picture, Mid Journey um, closed their free tier um, option. This to have a, a, a free version whereby you can go on the platform, they give you a number of um, images you can generate. But because of this particular scenario, they, they, they close that option. So now you, can, you, you have to pay, I think, $10 per month if you want to access the platform on Discord. So this is how much, um, how far we've come in the AI space. And it created so much, it created so much buzz and people were like, what's going on here? What's happening? What's this? And you don't. So now you have to question. So one of the things that's, Leonardo AI alternative. All right. So someone is also mentioned in the comment box that you can also use Leonardo AI. It's an alternative to Mid Journey as well. Thank you, Jay, for that recommendation. So if you're into image generation, you can also try Leonardo AI. It's also, I think, a platform alternative to Mid Journey. It's an um, image generative AI platform. Thank you so much, Jay. So let's move on. So one of the things, one of the ideas behind this is that now. You have to be able to you have to question everything you see online previously from the year 2000 to this particular moment that we are people just see anything on, on the internet and believe it's hook line and sinker but because of the ai ai um, artificial intelligence image generative age you've entered now you have to be able to question everything that you see you just don't take anything you see on the internet but you have to question it what, what is the source is this real um can i get a source can i get to the source so this is where we are right now so let's move on um so i'm moving on to the next slide i hope my slide did my slide change because i have an issue sometimes where the slide doesn't change i'll change the slide nope my slide didn't change okay so i guess i'm having that issue once again yep all right millie all right thank you thank you thank you so what has the journey been so far for artificial intelligence so when so many people think one of the reasons why i am running this this session this live stream is that People think AI is new, but it's not new. I've been in I've been in the space for like three years now, and so many things are happening. But because the buzz exploded because of ChatGPT, ChatGPT came out was released I think November last year, and it was so explosive. Like people were like, "Okay, is this um, thing thinking for itself or not?" So this this is a map we have so far of the um, computer science, I want to talk about artificial intelligence. This is how far we go. We go back all the way to 1950. All right. So one of the ways you can test um, the artificial intelligence um, system is if it can pass the Turing test. All right. So this is it's a test called a Turing test. So you can test the system to see if it has gotten to self-consciousness. But right now, we've not gotten there yet. Right now, no artificial intelligence system is self-conscious. People ask me, oh. Are you sure ChatGPT is not thinking for itself? No, it's not thinking. 
at the core level of chat GPT is just a bunch of if and else statements. When you go deep down into machine learning, we're going to explore all of that as well. So from 1950, also in 1950, we have the three laws of robotics. So artificial intelligence, AI goes hand in hand with robotics as well. So if you want to go into robotics, you also have to learn um, artificial intelligence or machine learning alongside or neural networks as well. So let's keep moving the, the timeline. We're, we're going back in time and we are coming to where we are presently. So now I think um, so some time back, my friend in the US, he sent me um, a picture of himself, not a picture, a video of himself in a self-driving car. I was like, wow, yeah, you're in a self-driving car in, 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 I think in Nevada. There was, no, there was no driver. He was sitting at the back. The steering was moving by itself and you're showing me the video of like, okay, you're living the life. You're living in the future whilst we are still in the past in, in Ghana, West Africa, to where we are. <laughs> so, but we have Tesla, right? I think I've seen someone driving Tesla in Accra, which is also a self-driving car as well, and semi-automated. You can go fully automated. You can, you can switch to uh, self-driving. So AI plays a role in all of these as well. And those um, systems have been explored way from the 50s, 1950s, 1955. And AI has been used in creating um, chess, chess system, or we're in 59 right, right now, MIT lab, had um, a setup for AI system and also General Motors as well. They had, they had an AI assembly line as well. So you can go, even the first chatbot. Chatbot also is, is making a comeback. Facebook had a chatbot some years ago, but people didn't really use it. So if you're looking, if you're a developer and you're looking for what to do in the AI space, one of them is chatbots because the, 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 the number of questions you can ask um, a company Let's say your mobile telecom service provider, the number of questions you can ask them is always fixed. There are no new questions you can generate. So once the questions are fixed or you have a frequently asked questions, you can, generate, you can turn those questions into a chatbot. So no matter what question the person asks in the system, you have a list of answers already. So if you're into development or you want to explore that space, um, going into chatbot creation is something you can look at. And that has started since 1965. All right. So spoke about autonomous vehicles as well. Stanford University was helping in that space. Um, what else are we looking at? IBM. IBM also has a plethora of tools you can learn from. They also have their own AI system. They also have their cloud services and all of them that you can employ. Then, I mean, people think that chatbots and um, AI systems are new, but if, you have, if you've used Siri, for instance, or Cortana, which didn't live long, you do, they are all artificial intelligence systems. So these are all the tools that you can explore. Then fast forward to 2022, last as I mentioned, ChatGPT was released by OpenAI, which brought back so many buzz about artificial intelligence. So one of the things also, if you're looking at the screen, you'll notice that, so why has this become successful? One of the reasons is because of um, cloud computing. So if you look on the screen on, on the left-hand side, the bottom there, you can see that now we can upload so many things. We don't have to rely on our local service anymore. Now everybody can use the cloud to access their service. I hope I'm not talking to, um, I know that Mambo Code uh, is, a, is a tech community. So I'm trying to not go too techy. I'm trying to, um, I don't know who else is here. I, I believe there are some more te advanced technical people than me here as well but I'm trying to not go too technical. So I'm not gonna to go too deep. We're just gonna brush over the things as much as possible, but not going too deep. So one of the things is, one of the things that has made um, artificial intelligence become a buzz right now is what we call the GPU. So all of us, I believe we all know what the CPU is. We all know what the central processing unit is in our computers, but so, um, the CPU works in such a way, what we call it, what we call it, um, um, serially, it processes information at the computer architecture level on a serial basis. So it takes one information, it processes it, and it moves on to the next. But when you go deep down into the artificial intelligence space, one of the things you'll be hearing about is GPU. That's a graphic processing unit. If you're into gaming here, if you play a lot of games, you, you probably have heard about GPU because that's where your graphic card is. Like a graphic card, what they call a graphic card is a GPU. So what has happened is that uh, people have been able to hack the, the GPU to, use to process more power. So the GPU has given um, 
has more processing power and we've been able to tap into that to, to process our artificial intelligence code. So now that's what you hear about NVIDIA. NVIDIA, NVIDIA are into graphic, graphic cards. Their stock price have jumped up because they produce a lot of graphic cards. And people previously, two, three, four years ago, more of the graphic cards were used for crypto mining. So if you're into crypto mining, you see that people use a lot of graphic card GPU to do that. But now we notice that, oh, we can use that for, for, for AI as well, to write AI systems and to run the AI code. So graphic cards have become um, um, hot in the system. So that's about it in the, in, the, in the history. So we know that cloud computing, graphic cards are some of the key computer architectural systems that have made, um, um, that have made artificial intelligence system a buzz in our current um, sphere. So now let's move on. Um, so people ask, like I said, I hope you can see the magic box, a little girl playing with a magic box. <laughs> Slide six, awesome, 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 it's working. All right, so pe people always ask me, so is chat GPT, is it a magic box? Like, does it, is there magic in it? It's not magic, like I said, um, at the core of computer science, it's just a bunch of logic if and else, we don't have systems that self-thinking right now, we've not gotten there yet. That's where we are. So um, so now let's, 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 let's look at some definitions as we, let's, so that we can clearly define what we are, what we are talking about here. These are some, some definitions you come across when talking about artificial intelligence. And so let's, let's take some few, one minute to look at them. Basically artificial intelligence, the ability of a machine to imitate human intelligence. So you are the human, you are the natural intelligent person and a computer is an artificial system. So that's basically what AI means. A machine that's able to imitate. So we are trying to let machines imitate the way we think and reason. But at the core of artificial intelligence is you've been now talking about machine learning. That's where the training happens. That's where the real um, background activity takes place. So machine learning provides AI with the ability to learn so this is where the real magic is happening. So the, the, the codes and the logic this is where they all, all happen. So if you want the system to have an ability to, to learn, you want to write an algorithm, you want to write a sequence of codes, you, 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 be, you, you want to explore machine learning and programming language. Okay, so which is more of Python. So if you're into Python programming language, you can easily transition into um, machine learning. Then we now move on to deep learning as well. So deep learning provide the ability to mimic human's brain networks, the, the neural network, where the more, more intelligence happens. So like for Tesla, for instance, this, this is where the Tesla codes are operating at. They are, they are more into the deep learning system whereby they can, they've trained their cars to be able to identify objects, to be able to respond in real time to what's happening in, 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 in the, on the roads or in an environment. So these are a few um, definitions that we're gonna be looking at. And um, also let's look at generative AI. If my screen has not changed, please let me know. Now I'm looking at the screen that says generative AI. So this is where um, generative AI is a broader term that encompasses any AI system that can create new content such as images, music, or video. And this is where um, ChatGPT falls under. So ChatGPT is part of the generative AI system whereby you can give it an instructions and it generates new content for you. It, as I mentioned already, it's generative AI. So this way the chat GPT, mid journey, um, anything you can think about in the AI space right now, this way they are. So you can create new images, um, DALI 2, mid journey, I've mentioned mid journey already. I have them listed on the next slide. So we're gonna look at all of them. So, so there are even platform that can generate music, music lyrics and all of that. So all of them, they are in here. So if you want to learn how to create such platforms, I'm gonna give you those um, platforms so you can learn for free. And you can also use deep learning, uh, our hosting platform. Anything you want to learn about artificial intelligence, you go to deeplearning.ai, you have, you have you covered. And if anything, basically anything you're thinking about, deep learning AI has done a great job creating all the things that you need to know in the space. Great. So these are some of the, these are some of the, I'm on slide, slide nine right now. 
So generative AI example, if you're into programming, we have Copilot from Microsoft. So you can incorporate it into your um, Visual Studio code and to help you generate predictive text on what you're trying to post that you, you're trying to use. I use it, but I don't use that often. I use more of um, ChatGPT. Um, it helps me so far, so, so far it's so good. I'm not using Copilot yet. It's 20, Copilot is $20 per month. All right, so ChatGPT is still free. ChatGPT also is $20 uh, for, the, for, the, for ChatGPT 4. Then we also have for the text generative AI spaces, we have for the languages, we have ChatGPT, we have Google Bard, we also have um, Bing, the Bing, the Bing uh, platform, that's Microsoft Search Engine, also has um, a generative AI system built into it. Then for the graphics, for so if you're into graphic design, you want to create memes, you can use Mid Journey, as mentioned earlier. You can use Adobe Firefly. So you just incorporate it into your Adobe platform. And you can also use um, DALI. DALI is also from OpenAI. So you can use all of this if you're into graphic designing or you just want to create a quick graphic work. So you just instruct it. You tell you what to do. Create, I hope we could do some demonstration later on. Create a dragon riding a bicycle. That's one of the examples I did in my last class. And the platform generated a dragon on a bicycle based off the prompt that it was given. Then for the video space, we have um, Synthesia. They claim they can create um, video generative AI system. So if you're into motion graphics, you can use Synthesia. If you've seen some platforms whereby um, some animations are talking and the voice is generated, those are video AI platforms. They're mostly not free. Uh, I'm going to explain why they're not free. Most of them are not, most of the generative AI platforms are not free because they are wrappers. They are wrapping a large, learning, a large language model on the background. It's more of like they are building on top of another person's platform. So for each agent or for each pinging that you do, you need to pay. You need to pay for the service. So you'll notice that most um, generative AI platform have limited free tier and you have to pay to move up to the, the premium version. So if you want to, if you're into that area, I can also explore that. So yeah, all right. I'm on slide 10 right now. I hope we are all moving together. If I get a thumbs up, slide 10. Um, yes, yes, thank you, Leo. Thank you very much, I appreciate the feedback. Um, so slide 10. What are we looking at now? So since ChatGPT is the one that's making so much buzz, I want us to focus a little bit on, I want us to focus a little bit on large language model. Large language model is what ChatGPT is all about. So, so even Microsoft Bing has built on top of OpenAI's large language model. So I was listening to, to, to a different session some time back and the guy said they basically trained some of some, some of this large language model on the open internet. So they've taken every information on the internet in an unstructured way and fed it into a database. Then the algorithm is what the is what is priority technology. So we don't know what open AI is using. So that's where that's where they are making money from. And Facebook also just released an open source model. So if you don't want to pay, if you don't want to use the paid a, a paid platform like um, ChatGPT. You can use, I've forgotten the name, you can use open Facebook's model to, to train your system. That, that is free, it's open source. So everybody's contributing to it and you can also access for free. I hope I remember the name before. If anyone knows the name, you can help me with the name, yeah. So what's a large language model? A large language model, LLM, basically is a trained database. So they fed it with everything on the internet, everything that you can think about, text, everything. So sometimes people think that ChatGPT it's a magic box, like I mentioned earlier. It's not. It's just this has been trained with a lot of information. Then the priority technology is what is the algorithm, the way the information is presented to you, is what is where the magic is happening. But at the end of the day, they're all codes. All right. So um, yes, let's continue. So here's an example. I remember when ChatGPT was released somewhere in January. I was testing it out. So yes, 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 an example. If you try to enter such an example like that, that, that listed here, you will not get any feedback. But initially, when ChatGPT was released, it was like a beast. You could ask it for anything, 
and it could, it could give you anything, although it's not connected to the internet yet. But right now, because of um, for privacy issues, they've had issues already in Italy. They, they're having issues with the American government and they want to regulate the space. So right now, if you enter, if you enter a query such as, such as um, how can I make bomb? That, that's a very dangerous query. It's gonna tell you that I'm sorry, but I cannot assist you with such a request, okay? They also asked, I also tried around, um, I asked some, some other question and it gave me this, the second response. So that's what it is right now. They've limited the way it's responded for privacy issues and for security purposes as well. So that they don't, we don't just feed, we don't just feed um, people with informations. All right, great. So now one of the, one of the key things you're gonna be learning when you're moving into the generative AI space is prompt design. How do you know what to tell the system to get the best answer from your query? So that's what, that's what we're gonna be looking at next. So prompt, prompt is more of like, what are you going to input into the system to get the right response? First and foremost, there are no perfect prompts. I've seen some people selling some courses saying that, um, come and learn prompt engineering and all of that. It's, just, it's almost like search engine. We, you definitely learn how to use these things when you use it. The more you use it, the more you understand it. So yes, this is an example of some some prompts that you could enter. Um, I, I use I use I use more Ghanaian example because I'm I'm based in Ghana, and um, Sako D and Shatawali are musicians based in Ghana. So you can write you can so you can tell Chat GPT to write me a poem in the style of Shakespeare, and it's Chat, Chat GPT is going to present to you. Um, your result in, in that style, all right? So another example is what? Explain quantum physics to me like I'm five. I use this a lot for topics that are very difficult, that I'm, I'm having difficulties and understanding it. I use this, explain to me like I'm five. So if you're someone who learns like me, who like learning things like a child, you can tell it like, I am five years old, explain this concept to me. And that's one of the, that's one, that's one good way you can use um, these systems. Another one is what you can so you can use to make a list of for camping trip to Mount Afajato. Mount Afajato is the highest peak in West Africa, and I've been there. I'm going to show you my nice picture of me taking a trip to Mount Afajato. So this is an example of writing in a certain language. So if you're into poetry, you're into writing a lot, you can use ChatGPT to to predict the style and the way you want your writings to go. So this, I'm, I'm a Star Wars fan, I like Star Wars. So this is Master Yoda, Master Yoda is showing on the screen. So I asked that GPT to present to me um, the precautionary cautions you should take when you're using um, AI um, ethics, AI ethics, write to me AI ethics in, in the way of um, Master Yoda. So you can see that the, the grammatical structure is different, but, but this is how, Master Yoda talks in the Star Wars franchise. So if you're a Star Wars fan, this is how you see Master Yoda mixing the tenses and everything up. So this is some of the things you can use um, Chat GPT for or any AI um, generative tools out there. So let's move on. So this is me um, taking a trip to the highest peak in West Africa. So you can, if you're going for a trip, you can ask Chat GPT or any text or language based system to tell you. I'm going for a trip to Mount Everest. So like I said, if you're planning a camping trip, you can ask um, a, a, a language model like ChatGPT to help you with the things you need for your, for, your, for your trip. So let's look at, let's further explore prompt engineering, what people call prompt engineering. Someone has designed a course uh, for prompt engineering, but here you're, you're gonna explore it for free. Let's look at how we can design a prompt. It's not rocket science. It's almost like entering a search query so the first example we're going to look at is what it, it's what is called few short learning, whereby you, 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 you train the system by giving it, a, giving it some examples of how you want your information to be presented back to you. So this is an example. So the yellow sections are the, the, the short learning we are giving the, 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 the language model. So we'll tell it that anytime I present to you peppermint, give me a response in French for the French version of peppermint, but present it this way. 
All right. So the, the next one is desert cactus. So present it, cactus du desert. I, I just speak French. I don't know how it's pronounced in French. So we, we gave it the first three yellow lines are the examples we are training the system with. Not training, but instruction we are giving it. When I say training, it's a bit more technical. Machine learning is where the training happens. So when we give it potato, it's going to give us pomme de terre. So this, this, is, this is what we call pure short learning approach towards using language models like ChatGPT, BARD, and Bing. So the, the last three are the queries you are going to enter. So if you, once you enter lipsticks, once you enter lipsticks, it's going to return the French version of lipstick to you. Once you enter the English word for um, orange juice, it's going to return the French version for you. Once you enter sparkling water, it's going to return instantly, it's going to return the French version of sparkling water. So this, so this, is, a, this is a technique you can use for language translation or whatever you're doing on a large language model, like such as ChatGPT, to give it instructions on how, and I think two weeks ago, ChatGPT also updated their platform whereby you can um, predefine or, or define the, your, your, your writing style. So if you're a writer, maybe you're a blogger, you're a writer, you can also train the, the, your, your, your ChatGPT to, to follow your writing style because everybody has their own writing style. So not to sound too robotic, you have to train it because these days we're already catching people in the workspace who don't even proofread or edit the, the prompt or the response that the, the, the language model gives to them. So you don't want to be caught in that scenario. Always proofread it or pre-train it or, or give it um, your own instructions on how you want it to respond to queries that you give to it. What can you use a large language model for? So these are many use cases you can explore, and um, you can explore. You can use you can use for chat um, for chat copywriting for translation. The example we just looked at is translation. You can use for summarization. Bad bad Google's bad is very good at summarization. So what you can do with Google bad is that you can just take a website link and give it to bad and tell it bad summarize this website for me. So what BARD is going to do for you is that it's going to tell you what the website is all about in, in a short summary. You can also attach uh, maybe a, a PDF or a document and ask for a summary. That's for a higher version. But using ChatGPT 4, you can do that. So ChatGPT will read the document and give you a summary of what is in that document. So if you're, if you're in the university, you can use um, large language model for grant writing, which I used recently. My startup, we're looking for grants. We have a, a project coming up. And we need some grants to um to run the project. Um guys for conversation, email formatting, and so many things. So these are examples um, or use cases of large language models such as Chat GPT, BAD, and Bing. These are the popular ones that you can use large language models for. Um, I don't know if I'm moving too fast or if you can see my screen as well. I'm moving on. Let's be careful. Like I mentioned, Chat GPT ha had an issue with. Yep, Perry, thank you for the feedback, Perry. ChatGP had an issue in, in, in Italy whereby someone's personal profile came up in a query. So the Italian government was like, no, we can't allow that. You are exposing people's personal information. So you have to be careful on how you use um, these language models. And one other precautionary measure you have to take is hallucination. I've experienced this some few weeks back whereby I gave it a prompt, I gave ChatGPT a prompt but the response it was giving me was way off. It, it had no correlation from what I asked it and the response it was giving me. That was the first time I experienced that. I've heard about it many times, but this was the first time I was actually experiencing um, chat GPT giving me, giving me a non-related answer uh, um, to a question I asked. So you have to be careful for hallucination. If you're using it for work, ensure you proofread whatever, whatever query you entered into the system. Make sure you make sure that what um, is give the feedback it's giving you, it relates or it's close to what you're looking for. If not, you'll be given um, <laughs> the wrong answer. And always make sure that you proofread it. Very important. And also the the unfortunate thing about Chat GPT three three point five is that it doesn't give you the source of its information. So we're now moving into plagiarism. So if you're a university student or you're using it for academic work. You have to be careful. There are other platforms that offers um, academic research papers and um, um, large language platforms as well. So there are other platforms like that that, that have come out 
they help university researchers or graduates to find um, sources for whatever quotes they are given. So if, you, if, you, if you're a student and you want to use uh, a large language model as ChatGPT, you have to be very careful about it because you might not get the source. But Bing, Microsoft Bing gives source. Microsoft Bing can give you the source um, of the information it's giving you. So if you want to get um, a query that comes with some sources, you can use Bing for now. But it's not, I, I don't, it's not as so, it's not so nice as ChatGPT itself, if, if you ask me personally. Yeah, so please, let's be careful. Now, let's move on. Can, would ChatGPT or AI take your job? That's one of the questions we want to explore next. Do you think they'll take your job? All right, so this, this is a funny cutting I, I did here. So an AI language model can what either be an assist, can be an assistive tool for you or to take your job. Why would I say to take your job? It to take your job in the sense that it's almost like a calculator or an aid to work faster. I believe that those who will lose their job are those people who do not know how to use lang um, platforms such as ChatGPT or, or, or other languages out there. Maybe, at least said maybe, maybe to take a job. So it depends on the space you are. People say that ChatGPT will take the job of programmers. I don't think so, because you need a programmer to write the code that is running, that will make ChatGPT to run. So what I think it will do is that it's gonna weed, it's gonna um, it's gonna weed out mediocre workers or mediocre programmers. But if you're very good at what you do, I had I had an interview with a researcher in the U.S. one time, some time back on my channel. It's, it's on my channel, and he said that we teach the programs to learn to think. The program is not thinking for us. We are the ones at the end of the day that have to give the computer program the instructions on what to do. So, but, so what, what's going to happen is that ChatGPT is going to usher in a new era of, of work. Some kind of works will fade away and new ones will come. But for you to be, for you to be um, job ready market or to, or to be ready for the job market, you have to learn these new tools and how to incorporate them. If you're not a programmer, but if you're, if you're a programmer, you also have to learn how to build um, AI tools as well. So you have to learn artificial intelligence and the likes. So this is what you should be thinking about. So let's look at some of the jobs that might, might be vanishing or might need artificial intelligence. Who knows what job is this? Who can tell me what job we are, look, we are looking at on the screen? Can someone type in the chat box, what job do we think this person is into? Teaching, great. Thank you so much, Ali. Thank you, Leo. Um, Cleo, Cleo, sorry. Thank you, Cleo. Teaching, teaching job, professor, yeah? Professor, professorship. Personally, I have a project I've, 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 I'm working on. I'm into STEM education. I'm also trying to build an AI learning platform as well. I will, I will not tell you, so you don't steal my idea. It's not novel, but I'm just patching a few things together and see what I can come out of. I, I'm, I'm, more, I'm, I'm a pragmatic. I'm not someone who just want to talk, talk, talk. Uh, we've built a bot already. My company, we, we've built a bot and we're we are now marketing, marketing it. What we're trying to do is to, to implement a voting system on the bot whereby you can pay to vote on the on the platform and you you execute everything within the bots. We're building on WhatsApp. I can tell you this one. So it's an open um, API. You can also look at it. But we're building a system whereby we want, we want to sell something on the bots and make every all the transaction to be executed within the bots without leaving the bots. So it's not like you don't have to go to a website and complete a transaction. We want to make sure that we finish everything. That's where the difficult part is right now. But for the bot itself, we built it. So now that's the phase two of, of our project on our roadmap. So teaching is a job that will take a major hit in the area of um, artificial intelligence. Like I mentioned earlier, when I use ChatGPT for a very difficult topic, I tell it, explain quantum physics to me like I'm five. Like it's a programming language I've been struggling with for a very long time, the whole of last year. But now with ChatGPT, I don't want to ask anybody any question. I hardly go on Stack Overflow. I don't do anything else that such. I just tell ChatGPT, explain this little part to me and explains it to me. Even before I read the chapter, I'll take the chapter topic and I'll give it to ChatGPT and say, give me a summary of what this chapter is all about in this course I'm learning. So before I even enter the course itself, I have a better idea, like a five years old before entering the course. So if you're a teacher out there, you should learn how to incorporate ChatGPT because your, your students are using it anyway. So don't be left behind. So learn how to incorporate it. What about the next one? Who thinks, what job is this? Who can tell what job is this? What job do you think this lady is into? I think a librarian. Already? Librarian? Um, mm -hmm. Librarian? No. 
programmer, programming. Yes. Oh, programmer. Okay, quite yes. She's holding a Python programming book. Yeah. So she's a programmer. Perry, Perry got it right. So the argument is that would programmer become obsolete? I don't think so. Like I mentioned, those who are very bad, junior levels will become very difficult to find. But if you're a mid level to a senior level um, developer, you're always going to have a job. So so um, AI tools is going to give everybody an ability to, to write the code. So right now, the difficulty, of, of course, we have the no codes platforms already, but with generative platforms, we're going to have we're going to, more people are going to have more access to be able to write programming codes that they can run themselves. I've seen, I'm, I'm very active on Twitter. On Twitter, I've seen people writing a whole uh, website and they said that, oh, I have zero programming language, but I've written a whole, a whole website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so these are, these are, these are things that are going to be coming, are going to be coming more frequently common. So if you're a programmer, you have to say, okay, how can I incorporate maybe, um, co-pilot and work faster and better? So there's not many things you have to explore. What about the what about the next one? Who, okay, this one this one should be obvious. All right, Gonzalo, thank you. What um area do you think we should play this into? This one is very obvious. Everybody should get this one. Everybody should get this one. Lawyer, great. Lawyer and um yes. So those who are into the um judiciary arm of government, legal, legal practitioner, great. So legal practice is all about making reference to old cases. So, so you can imagine if someone has built um, a, an, an LLM, a large language model, for all the, of course, there are database for that already. But now imagine whereby as a lawyer, you can just prompt, you can, you have a case, a current case, and all you have to do to, all you have to tell the chatbot or your LLM is to give you an example of similar cases that have happened already. And it will present it, it will present all the previous cases with references to them. So a funny thing happened in South Africa, whereby a lawyer went to court recently, I think like two months ago or so. He went to use Chat GPT and he used Chat GPT to ask Chat GPT for a question. Unfortunately, like I said, plagiarism and hallucination, you have to be careful when you use um, LLM for this. So, so you have to look for more niche specific LLMs. All right. So if you so I don't I don't know if there's a there's a there's a Judiciary LLM, they, they should be, they should be, but I've not seen, I've not come across them already. But this South African lawyer used ChatGPT, and ChatGPT gave the lawyer a case which doesn't exist in their jurisdiction. So this is, so, so, so the judge had to tr give, the judge had to warn the lawyer not to do that next time again because he, he, the, the lawyer was warned, was reprimanded for doing that because he referenced a case which doesn't exist in the jurisdiction of South Africa. So these are hallucinations that, that I mentioned earlier on. So if you're if you're a programmer or you you can look for you can look for your country or maybe whatever country you're coming from, Nigeria, that come together, mom so called, and say we want to build an LLM for the judiciary system for Nigeria. So all the cases that have happened in Nigeria, all the previous cases within the jurisdiction of Nigeria, you put them into a database and train an algorithm. To be able to respond in a chat like so the, 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 the good feature about it is that there's a chat like feature of LLM. So I believe you can make money wherever country you are. So these are more specific um, niche use cases. So you, you're not going to be thrown away because all the all the cases you're going to be looking at is real cases that have happened within your jurisdiction. So lawyers, these are things, these are tools lawyers will be looking at to be using. All right. I don't know if there are any questions or anyone wants to say something. All right, so. Now, the Mom So Code community is a software development community and technology training community. My friend, I am Agama, she's the one heading that community and um, she's doing a great job over there. So you can say, okay, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm into software development. What can I do? Or you've been talking about AI, machine learning. What can I do in this space? So uh, this is some jobs you can look at, but more in the development space. So you can become an AI developer um, you can also become an AI architecture. So these are more on the software engineering side of, or computer science side of things. You can, if, if you're not into writing of codes, you can look, you can look at um, business intelligence developer. All right. So these are skills, these are jobs for the nearest future, or they are already existing or like new jobs are coming up. So if you want to take a lead, take a leapfrog into the future. These are job titles you can explore in the job market right now. 
data scientist already is existing, all right? So you can become a data scientist. You'll be using artificial intelligence techniques and machine learning. And above all, machine learning engineer. So you want to, if, um, my background is telecom engineering. This is why I'm based right now. So I'm also, I'm also making a transition to be more focused into machine learning engineering as well, because I'm already in the engineering space. So it's more natural for me to um, um, narrow down into machine learning engineering. So this is what I'm doing now and becoming better at it. So I can take a screenshot and um, explore this space for the job market. All right, I think, yes. So where, so I've been talking, where can you learn these skills? You can learn um, if you're new, totally new to, if you're totally new to artificial intelligence and you want to learn, um, you need a platform to learn, our, 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 our source platform, Deep Learning AI, it's a great resource, a great platform you can explore. So um, you get a percentage, we'll send you a link, you get a percentage discount for joining this session and you can explore all the courses, you can go to the courses, introduction to AI, everything you need to know about artificial intelligence and, and build a, a career and a skill for yourself, for yourself, you can get started at deeplearning.ai. So please visit our platform. Um, I'm, I'm an advocate for the platform officially. So please visit um, deeplearning.ai to get your AI journey started. I'm gonna give you some other platforms as well. Google also has a platform for generative AI path. So if you're an African, um, you want to learn generative AI, you can visit um, this website, cloudskillsboost.google. And you can, get, um, you can learn more about generative AI on this platform. And if you are more on the Microsoft track and you use Microsoft Azure, you can learn and go to learn.microsoft.com. There are short courses there. So you can search for Microsoft Azure AI Fundamentals. And um, if you're also into certifications and you use LinkedIn a lot, LinkedIn also in partnership with Microsoft has a track, they have, they have a track, a path as well, a learning path. So you can go to linkedin.learning and search for generative AI or any of the set, um, queries that you have on the screen. And you will have access to learning materials to get you started in the artificial intelligence space. So in conclusion, Artificial intelligence is just a calculator to help you achieve your job, your tools, your, your goals. So don't, don't solely rely on it. It's just a tool. So use it as a tool. And like I said earlier on, is the people who learn to use it as a tool that will, that will adapt and become better at what they do. Those who will lose their job are those who will not use this tool to better themselves. So the choice is all yours. And as you've come here, you have a better tools to use. I'm, I'm going to be sending a, a list of materials to everybody who signed up. Um, some of them, you know them, so that I, um, that's, that's supposed to be for the practical session. Maybe I'll host another session next week where we'll do hands-on experiments, but I don't have to go beyond an hour for today. So I'm going to email them to you, and hopefully you join again next week, and we'll have a practical demonstration on how to use all these platforms. So. Some of the so um, open AI is one of the most um, common platform or the leader in the industry currently, and they have chat GPT for language models. They have DAL, DAL2 for image generation, and they have another one they just released. So if you want to get a um, speech to text, it's called whisper. So if you're into, you want to incorporate a voice system into your system, into your platform, you can look at open AI's whisper. So it can help you with um, speech, speech to text and text to speech all those um, translate transitions, you can use Whisper to do that. All right, okay, so I have, I have a quote here. Chat GPT is a language model and not a, not a knowledge model. It doesn't know things, it is repeating things. I got this quote from Eric Nila. It's a Wall Street Journal science reporter. So it's, it, Chat GPT doesn't think for itself, all right? So there is just a database with you trying to pull as much information from it. And um, once again, I'm gonna end with another generative image. I don't know who I've seen this image. Have, have you come across this image? Do you think it's real based on our session today? Do you think this image is real or not? Let, let, let me see your comments. This is Donald Trump being arrested by some police officers in New York, by New York police officers. So do you think this image is real or fake? 
So type real or fake in the comment box. All right, so no, fake, fake, AI, real. <laughs> Esther said it's real. Okay, <laughs> Esther joined, you didn't join early. We, 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 we touched on it, it's fake. All right, Jacinta says it's fake as well. Fake, fake, fake. Awesome. So where we are right now, so you have to learn how to question everything you see on the internet. Now, as, now that we have generative um, image generative tools out there, anybody's image can be generated. We have um, Dali to me, Jenny, um, Leonardo. Someone mentioned Leonardo earlier. Leonardo AI. These are tools you can use to generate images. So go on the platform. The funny thing is that um, you can also use ChatGPT to generate images. I saw it. I, I've been playing with it. I'm also going to add that for you to, to experiment as well. You have to give it a certain code. Once you enter that code, it also will generate image for you. It, it was fun. Like it's fun. I don't know if it's still working, but I'm going to send that to you. So you can use ChatGPT to also generate images as well. Sorry, I must retire. All right, Gonzale, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate, I appreciate your time for coming. Um, we've wrapped up. So questions. Um, if you have questions, you can raise up your hands and um, let's wrap up. Next week, we would, we would have another session, a more practical session. Um, so please, yes, you can unmute yourself. I have one hand lifted up here. Okay. Um, you can request for the mic. Add a career for non-coders in AI. Are there careers for non-coders coders in AI? Esther. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so you can, so when you say non-coders, um, like I mentioned, I, I listed some, some path. If you're into um, data, anal data analytics, data analysis, that's one area you can explore. So the, the um, data analysis job is also being threatened because you can use ChatGPT4 to analyze data. So you can plug in your, your spreadsheets, if you're into data analytics, you can just connect your spreadsheet um, to ChatGPT4 and to do all the analysis for you. But at the end of the day, you need a human, a human touch to everything. You need a human who works in that particular niche. Maybe let's say you're working in the telecom industry. You need, you're working in the telecom industry in Nigeria. So you need that final touch. There's a fine line, it's a fine thing that you, you know that the machine might not be able to provide. That's what you have to give the finishing touches to. So data analysis, um, business intelligence, it's under, um, it's under, it's, um, it's one area you can look at and how you can um, incorporate artificial intelligence into it. So um, business intelligence and um, generative AI in general is for non-coders. If you're a non-coder, maybe you're right. I don't know what you mean by non-coder. Yes, um, Millie is responding for non-coders. Said you can, you can also be a prompt engineer. Like I said, I don't see it as a new field, but I don't think it will last so much as a field, but you can also become a prompt engineer as well, but I believe that the, the AI platform will become much simpler as we move forward. So we know you know we need um, prompt engineers anymore. But if you can do it now, it's an early career you can take, take advantage of it, make them as much money as you can, <laughs> and move on. Yes, thank you, Mili, Mieli, for that response in the comment section. Any questions, please? More questions? You can unmute yourself and ask questions. Um, Martin, okay. Sorry. Um... Okay. Yes. Who is talking? Uh, Marvin. Marvin. All right. All right. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, but uh, in the presentation, you you made emphasis of uh, me being able to use AI to generate um, fake images. Uh, how are you able to detect that an image has been generated by an AI? Is there are there any tools to help you do that? Okay. Great question. Um, thank you so much for that. So for now, um, so let me backtrack a little. I don't say, when I say fake images, I'm talking about a hyper-realistic kind of images. So there are different kinds of images you can generate. So, so let me, I don't know if I can. So the ones, the one I showed the, the community right now, they are turned as hyper-realistic. So they look very real. But of course, there are other kind of, there, there's animation. You can have an image which is just a pure animation. You can have an image which is cartoons. All these are all these are content you can generate. So it's not limited to hyper realistic images alone, but you can generate any kind of. If you are into the art, if you're if you're an artist, you can realize that there are different kind of images you can generate. So it's not just um, hyper realistic images alone. Uh, unfortunately, I can't find them. Um, I was looking for some. I'm looking for some. I was looking for some right now. Yes, you can. So how do we detect? You just have to use your intuition. Like you have to question everything. And I believe that there are some people also 
who are building platforms that can detect, especially for the text AI, text generated AI. I've seen a number of them, even open AI themselves were generating one, but they abandoned the project. He said it's very difficult to determine. So my belief that, so the, 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 you just have to use your, sorry to say, uh, no, 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 just have to use, we have to just fall back on common sense. You have to question everything. Do you think this image is real? It's a good question you have to ask yourself. All right, you have to ask what, what is the source of this image? So that's another way you can, you can um, check if an image is fake or not. Is there an AI, AI that could check plagiarism? Yes, someone has built something like that. But like I said right now too, and even, even open AI themselves, they were struggling to build a system for that. Some universities are using some, some, some of those systems. So, that, so the best thing you can do, what I do, is that when I generate a text with ChatGPT, I take it to um, Qbots. Qbots, another writing tool, it's a writing tool. So Qbots restructures everything again. The pro version is very good. So Qbot will restructure the sentences and give it a little bit more human touch. Then once again, you yourself, you have to give it your own human touch. You have to read through. And sometimes even at, at the end of it, if you, if you use ChatGPT a lot, at the end of it, ChatGPT always gives a common phrase. You have to remove that phrase. That phrase can easily give you away. So we've seen research papers where people don't remove that phrase and it's very embarrassing. We've seen research papers where people are people just copy and paste everything ChatGPT gives to them, and even ChatGPT's own phrase is also captured in there. So proofread, edit it, give it your own human touch, and I think you'll be good. Savvy, I hope that answers your question, Savvy. All right, thank you too. Any other question or contribution? You want to say something? You want to contribute to the um, conversation? I can give you the mic. Perry, Perry is very resourceful. Cleo. Um, Ali, I don't even want to say something. All right. Okay. All right. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, um, thank you all so much for joining. I'm going to send some resources to the email. So keep an eye to your email. Um, Deep Learning AI also moderator is also going to send you a discount. So if you want to use our platform to learn, to jump into the AI learning space, we have a heavy discount for you for attending our session. And, um, at this point, I'm going to hand over back to my guest or my host, I'm the guest here, you're the host. I'm going to hand over to Adama for, and to wrap it up. Thank you so much. Um, hello everyone. Thank you for joining and thank you Franz for this very enlightening session. I want to believe that everyone who joined has learned something new and that this has sparked your enthusiasm for the generative AI and also the AI space in general. I love the questions that you have asked. Um, I think it's the beginning of um, something very interesting and I really look forward to hear your stories after this and hopefully we'll see you next week where we'll have the practical session with, with France again. I think that will be uh, very engaging because it will be an opportunity for you to actually put to practice uh, what France has talked about here today. So thank you all for joining. We're very delighted. And um, for those, uh, if you're a woman, you're a mom here and you're just starting out in your coding journey, uh, feel free to look up our website, moms2code.net. And also, if you'd like to join us on Facebook, the, the, the name is Digital Women Tribe. Uh, join us if you're not interested in coding and you're just looking at other aspects of the tech space. Um, Digital Women Tribe is the place. We're also on Instagram, Digital Women Tribe. We're on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, Moms who code is on LinkedIn. Moms who code is on Instagram. We're on like all social medias, like not literally all, but most of it, the popular ones were there. So you can find us there. So uh, thank you so much, everyone. Um, bye bye. <laughs>